talking about the brain. And maybe we could start with, you know, how you think about the brain specifically. Like, what is the brain? What does it do? What does it not do? You know, it helps us survive. The nervous system is designed to orchestrate all the processes in the body, not just thinking and not just behavior. It really can be divided into five things. So there's sensation, and sensation is really bound or restricted by the receptors in the body. So receptors in the eye that perceive photons, light energy, receptors in the skin that perceive pressure, you know, touch receptors, mm -hmm. smell, taste, hearing, et cetera. And the interesting thing about sensation and the fact that the nervous system needs to pay attention to sensation is it's non-negotiable. The nervous system of humans is designed to extract physical phenomenon from the universe that are non-negotiable, photons of light. I can't see in the infrared with my eyes and I can't see ultraviolet light with my eyes and I can't perceive that because I don't have the receptors for it. So all the time you're sensing things, like right now your feet are sensing the contact with your shoes, but you're not thinking about it until I say that. Uh -huh. And then you shift your perception. Right. So perception is like this spotlight. So the brain wants to constantly bring in sensation. It's non-negotiable what's coming in. It's just dependent on your environment. Perception is negotiable. You can control that. Because I just said shoes and you thought about your feet and mm -hmm. there you are. You know, in terms of value of understanding the nervous system and where it can be steered, it's absolutely clear that the nervous system can change in response to experience. So this thing we call neuroplasticity is really that. It's the brain's ability to modify itself in response to uh -huh. experience. And I think it's important to understand that from birth till about age 25, the brain is extremely malleable in a kind of almost passive way where kids are exposed to things and the brain is just wiring up. I mean, the brain is really designed to adjust itself uh, in order to be in concert with its surroundings and to optimize that just the, the way we described a minute like ago. Like the way that mm -hmm. a child can learn a language very quickly or, or three languages. play the guitar or something yeah, like that. Yeah, without an accent, you know, right. three languages without an accent. It's remarkable. You try and do that after age 25, it's very challenging. Then there are feelings, which can be a little bit nebulous, but feelings are a link between our emotion and it generally invokes the body, sensations in the body and concepts in the mind of what those sensations are about. That's really what emotions are. Animals definitely experience them. I'm kind of appalled to think that 10 years ago, people like, do animals have emotions? Of course they have emotions, right? right? Because those are bodily sensations merged with some perception. So of course they do. And then there's thoughts. And thoughts are interesting because thoughts happen spontaneously. Think about like a web browser that's constantly giving you pop-ups. Mm -hmm. But thoughts can also be deliberate. So you and I can decide right now that we're gonna think about a plan for something or we're gonna think about what's going on in the world. So thoughts happen spontaneously and they can be deliberate. And then the final thing is behaviors and actions. So the nervous system is responsible for sensation, perception, feelings, thoughts, and behaviors. And what's interesting, you start to think about that as you're like, okay, that's a lot, but what is the nervous system really trying to accomplish? Like on any given day or at any moment, what's it trying to accomplish? And it's really trying to accomplish one thing, which is to take perceptions of the outside world and merge those with perceptions of the inside world, what we call interoception, and to link those in a way that's operating on our environment in the appropriate way. Uh -huh. So what do I mean by that? So if I'm feeling anxious and I'm in a very calm environment, I'm gonna perceive that rapid heart rate and kind of feeling of agitation in my body as inappropriate for the moment. Right, And my goal then as, a, as an organism is to adjust my, my level of what they call autonomic arousal or alertness down. If I'm at a, at a great party or I'm at a wedding or it's a celebration or I'm at a protest or, you know, um, then I might feel that my level of alertness is appropriate for my environment. So the nervous system is in this constant dynamic interaction with the outside world and trying to figure that out. One way that this can be kind of conceptualized is there's an emerging idea that's kind of interesting about impatience. So we've all had the feeling of being impatient. Some people are far more patient than others. If you think about some of the, the sort of core practices of mindfulness and self-regulation of like focusing on breathing or focusing on, on you know, state of mind, a lot of that is trying to bring more awareness to your internal state, but what our brain is normally doing when our eyes are open and we're interacting in the world is we're constantly trying to update our internal state to match external demands of the world. And this harkens back to a, you know, like a really early design of all nervous systems, which is how do you take an organism that needs certain things, food, water, mates, reproduction, shelter, how do you move that organism? How do you create a system that will do that 
in best relation to the environment. The, the brain is basically designed to be customized in the early part of life and then to implement those algorithms and that circuitry for the rest of, your, of its life. And so the brain can change in adulthood and it can change provided that there's an emphasis on some perceptual event. So in other words, if you wanna change your brain as an adult, let's say you wanna be less anxious, you wanna learn a new language, you wanna be more functional in some way, presumably. The key thing is to bring focus to some particular perception of something that's happening during the learning process. And the reason for that is that there's a neurochemical system involving acetylcholine. So for people that wanna change their brain, the power of focus is really the entry point. And the ability to access deep rest and sleep. Mm. Because most people don't realize this, but neuroplasticity is triggered by intense focus. But neuroplasticity occurs during deep sleep and rest. And we can talk about how to optimize those different brain functions. One of the things that's really important also to think about how the brain works in terms of plasticity and all this stuff is what the brain really wants to do is also pass as much of what it does off to reflexive behavior as possible. Uh -huh.